Good morning and welcome to St. John's in Montclair. Today is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. If you have not downloaded your bulletin, you can find it on Facebook or on our website, and I encourage you to do that so you can join in with us at home. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty God, source of all that is and giver of every good gift, you create all people in your image and call us to love one another as you love us. We confess that we have failed to honor you in the great diversity of the human family. We have desired to live in freedom while building walls between ourselves and others. We have longed to be known and accepted for who we are while judging others based on the color of their skin or cultural differences. Forgive us, holy God. Give us eyes to see you as you are revealed in all people. Strengthen us for the work of reconciliation rooted in love. Restore us in your image to be the beloved community, united in our diversity, even as you are one with Christ and the Spirit, holy and undivided Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the, to the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Please join us now in Psalm 100, the Jubilate. Be joyful, joyful in the Lord, all, all you lands. lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Please join in on Canticle H, a song of Hosea, sing, saying this in unison. Come, let us return to our God, who has torn us and will heal us. God has struck us and will bind up our wounds. After two days, revive us. On the third day, restore us, that in God's presence we may live. Let us humble ourselves. Let us strive to know the Lord, whose justice dawns like morning light. It's dawning as sure as the sunrise. God's justice will come to us like a shower like spring rains that water the earth. We will now hear the first lesson read by Paul Sugarman. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed there was a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reaching to heaven. And angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, 
Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called the place Bethel, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And now, please join in in home in unison, Psalm 86. Teach me your way, O Lord and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the nethermost pit. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent men seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes, but you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. We will now hear the second lesson read by Tom Minette. Reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God, for the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our sequence anthem will now be played by Ellen Lentz. I'd like to dedicate this little piece of elegy to my beloved piano teacher who died during COVID.
Thank you, Ellen. So sorry to hear about your piano teacher. Today we have the parable of the wheat and the weeds, what most of us grew up probably hearing as the wheat and the tares, uh, which is the way the King James Version uh, titles this parable of Jesus, this fam very famous parable. And um, in the parable, which I'm about to read, um, the, there is a second part. But I have not in, I'm not going to include the second part because um, most biblical scholars believe, and I agree, that Jesus did not um, interpret his own parables. They weren't really meant to be interpreted. They were meant to be uh, the living word that is interpreted generation after generation. And so he did not give it a, a generally an interpretation. He wanted us to think about it. He wanted it to work in us. And so I am going to uh, read the beginning of that now and um, not read the interpretation so that we can try to interpret it for ourselves. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put before them another parable the kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed wheat, weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. As I said, uh, the, the word is meant to be the living word. And so we, uh, in every generation, interpret it in our own way. Uh, the letter to the Romans, for instance, today from Paul uh, says words that I think speak exactly to our COVID situation now. When we hear, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. Or when we hear about the, the creation itself being bound in decay, it certainly speaks to the situation now with global warming. Or when we hear, um, now hope that is seen is not hope for who hopes for what is seen, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. And again, uh, e even in our time, even in this COVID time, we hear those words as the kind of patience we're having to have now with our own global crisis. Um, another example is in our Old Testament reading with what we often refer to as Jacob's Ladder. And it's such a beautiful metaphor because it works in so many different ways in so many different generations. Uh, we hear about the angels that are, you know, descending and ascending this ladder that connects heaven and earth. Uh, and so in, in uh, Jewish interpretation, that was also, the, that ladder was often seen as the law itself. The law that literally came down from heaven uh, to Moses and was brought to earth uh, to the people, read to the people, and is continually uh, operating as a ladder between heaven and earth because it gives us God's good guidance for our lives. So in a sense, it is God coming to earth and um, our offering to God as we obey that law. It's also, that ladder could also be seen as a foreshadowing of the incarnation itself. When God literally comes to earth down that ladder, you could say. Or you could even say the ladder itself is Jesus. 
that Jesus as truly human and truly divine is in fact that connecting ladder between heaven and earth. So if we look at this parable of the, uh, of the wheat and the weeds um, a little more closely, let's start with the fact that it's thought that the weeds in this parable are pro it's probably a reference to something called bearded darnel, which is a particular weed. It's a ryegrass. Um, and it, it, uh, if you've ever had ryegrass in your garden, you know that it's a horrendous weed. You, you, you really, literally cannot rid your garden of it. I've had it, I know. And um, it looks very much like wheat. So uh, the, the uh, in fact, it was called false wheat. It looks so much like wheat. So it would grow with the wheat and you were literally unable to tell what to pull out of the ground until the harvest came. And when the harvest came, if the seeds were black, then you knew that it was false darnel. If they were brown, you knew that it was wheat. And in fact, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, bearded darnel works as, as a metaphor, even in the sense that it is poisonous, it's toxic. So it causes hallucinations and it can be fatal. And so we see it functioning as sin in this parable. And the, uh, we, we know that that's probably what they're referring to because even in Roman law, there was even a law about this that prohibited sowing Darnell among the wheat of an enemy. So uh, even historically, we know that, that that is likely what was being talked about. But there are many ways to interpret this parable. And each brings it alive for a different people and a different generation because it is the living word. Now, the traditional interpretation that many of us have heard is that the weed is the righteous and the, the weeds are the sinners and the righteous are going to heaven and the sinners are going to hell. And that's a very traditional, simplistic take on this parable. Or we could think of it perhaps this way, which is a little more complex, that Jesus perhaps is talking about the subtle nature of sin. The fact that even we have trouble uh, differentiating uh, between the wheat and the darnel weed, that between what is good and what is evil, that it's, it's sometimes very difficult to tell. And um, we let evil, therefore, grow in our lives, grow with the good. The evil grows right alongside of it. And it's so subtle, we often don't see it until it is out of control. And so entangled in the weeds that, as Jesus says in this parable, that it, to pull it out at that point will often pull up the good wheat also. So you just kind of have to let it be until the harvest. Or another way you could think about it is that God gives us time to sort out the good and the evil for ourselves. That God is giving us time until the ultimate harvest to uh, learn for ourselves what is wheat and what is weeds. It's um, an extension of God's grace, you could say. He's going to let us uh, learn the hard lessons and figure out what exactly, what exactly are the weeds in our own life and so that we can be wary of them. Earlier in Matthew, Matthew says, God makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. So again, we have this idea that, that God gives us this incredible freedom. He's going to allow the righteous and the unrighteous to thrive in hopes that before the harvest comes, they will uh, develop the kind of self-awareness God is hoping for them so that they themselves can um, be done with the weeds in their life. And so God lets it all grow together as an extension of God's own grace. Jeremiah said, perhaps even now they will turn from their evil ways and ask the Lord to forgive them before it is too late. And so there, even in the Old Testament, we have that idea 
that God will allow us, that God gives us tremendous freedom, um, that God lets us make our mistakes, that God lets us do bad things, so that hopefully we will learn before it's too late, as Jeremiah says. Now maybe Jesus is saying that um, maybe it's a warning to us in the sense that um, unlike God, we are impatient to declare who's good and who's bad. We don't have that grace of God to let people kind of figure it out for themselves. We're too quick to think we know what is good and what is evil. And of course, that goes right back to the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, uh, they're saying that we want to know, we want to be able to say what is good and what is evil. But um, that is original sin because only God truly knows what is good and what is evil. And the worst sin of all is us thinking we know better than God. So the parable might be about how gray everything is. What's good and what's bad in people isn't easily separated by us or correctly separated by us. Goodness and evil in us, uh, even in, within us, can be so close that it's hard to separate the wheat from the weeds. And that's important to accept because if we can't see the weeds in ourselves, how can we tolerate that others have weeds also? We have to understand that the wheat and the weeds are kind of all mixed up in us. And they're all mixed up in other people too. And sometimes all we can see in others is the weeds. But the wheat is there, and we need to be looking for that too. And it helps us understand um, that the person that I judge to be bad, the person I judge to be full of weeds, um, has good in, in them also, and I need to be looking for that because our impulse is to divide the world into wheat and weeds, uh, saints and sinners. We are much more black and white thinkers than God who understands the complexity of it all. And today's parable perhaps suggests that this, this idea of letting the wheat and the weeds grow together speaks to that complexity of human nature and the need for us to wait and to watch and to not be so convicted of how right we are about things. Richard Hooker, of course, <clears throat> the father of Anglicanism back in the 16th century uh, said, life is not lived in black and white, but in the shades of gray. And I know I've told you before, I love his favorite response to almost everything was, it's just a little more complicated than that. And I think that's what our parable is talking about today. Each of us is a mix of holy and unholy, straightforward and deceitful, dependable and unworthy, authentic and superficial. We all are wheat and weeds, sinner and righteous. Yet we persist in our confidence that we can differentiate the unrighteous from the righteous within ourselves and within others. And most of us can remember a time, I think, if we take a moment to see how wrong we've all been as human beings historically all along the way in judging who, who, was, who was superior and who was inferior, who was the wheat, who was the weeds. We can think about so many examples of how wrong we are when we think we can make this judgment. Certain peoples, certain races were thought inferior, whether we thought that consciously or unconsciously, even in our own lifetime. I know uh, we've, many of us heard stories from grandparents or parents that uh, when the Irish immigrants came over, for instance, that there were signs up in the windows that said, Irish need not apply. I know that I heard story from, stories from my own father about the Swedish immigrants in Minnesota who were called blockheads <laughs> to their faces, and their children weren't allowed in school because they were thought to be inferior. 
I personally remember um, arriving as a very uh, little child in uh, Florida. We had moved from California and uh, going into a gas station uh, right after the plane landed and there was one drinking fountain that said had a sign over it that said colored and one that had a sign over it that said white. And I remember <laughs> how innocent I was at, at such a young age um, that I went to my mother and I, I, I thought the water was colored. I thought that sounded wonderful. But um, it was such a loss of innocence for me, even at that young age, to realize that it was referring to people and in a way that I had never even thought of at the time. But that was a whole race of people being judged inferior. And whole groups of people we know today are labeled as undesirable or inferior or weeds. We, <laughs> historically, slavery, of course, is um, the best example here in this country when black people were labeled as um, some kind of inferior race. Or for the Jewish people um, from our Old Testament heritage, of course, the Holocaust is an example of how a whole race of people were labeled as inferior. And also here in our country, Manifest Destiny uh, labeled the Native Americans as inferior and needing to be just pushed aside so our country could expand all the way to California. This parable itself was used by King Ethelred in England uh, decades ago when he ordered the St. Bryce's Day massacre of all the Danish people in England. And it read, quote, all the Danes who have sprung up in England, sprouting like Darnell amongst the wheat, are to be destroyed by a most just extermination. <laughs> but, of course, this parable counters. We are not the best judges of what is good and what is evil, what is wheat and what is weeds in ourself or in others. Only God can sort it all out, and only God will do that at the end of the age. It's hard to tell the wheat from the weeds. That's the problem. But thinking we can tell the wheat from the weeds is the bigger problem. As we grow together in that field as, as a couple, as a family, as a church community, as a nation, we begin to see clearly that we cannot judge what is a wheat and what is wheat and what is wheat. All wheat, all is wheat in God's eyes. Or more, more accurately, you could probably say, all is weeds in God's eyes, beloved weeds in God's eyes. Jesus tells us clearly in today's parable, it is not our job to determine who is within and who is beyond God's love. It's our job to love them all and let God sort it out at the harvest. Amen. Amen. Now let us say together the Apostles' Creed. which I don't seem to have. Sorry, we had some printing problems today, and I think that was a victim of that. <laughs> Thank you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
And also with you. Let us pray the Lord's own prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please uh, join now as Tom Manette uh, uh, prays the prayers of the people. God of freedom, we pray, pray for our nation and all the nations of the world, for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed, and for leaders everywhere that they would serve the common good. Inspire all people with the courage to speak out against racism and to actively resist evil. Unite the human family in bonds of love. God of freedom, hear, hear our, our prayers, prayers for the world. God of creation, we pray for the earth entrusted to our care, for the animals and the birds, the mountains and oceans, and all parts of your creation struggling with global warming that have no voice of their own. Stir up in us a spirit that protects the earth and all its resources that we may leave to our children's children the beauty and abundance you have given us. God of creation, hear God our prayers, prayers for, for the earth. God of peace, we pray for this community, for our local leaders, for our schools, places of business, and especially for our essential workers who risk their lives to serve us during this COVID crisis. Kindle in every heart a desire for equality, respect, an opportunity for all. Give us courage to strive for peace among all people, beginning here at home. God of peace. Hear our prayers for this community. God of mercy. We pray for those in any kind of need or trouble, for those whose lives are linked with ours as part of the human family, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, especially those suffering from COVID-19, for the isolated, the lonely, for those facing violence, for all who help, all held down by prejudice or injustice. Awaken in us compassion as we seek to serve Christ in all persons. God of mercy. Hear our prayers for the suffering. God of justice. We pray that you would breathe your spirit over us and all the earth, that racial barriers would crumble and divisions cease. Make us more fully your healers of this broken world. Be with those unfairly incarcerated, especially those who receive no mercy from our court system because they are black. Unite us with all people in bonds of love that the whole earth and all its people may live in a world of justice and peace. God of justice, Hear our, our prayers, prayers for, for justice, justice for all people. God of grace, we pray for those who have died, especially those who have died alone from COVID-19. For the faithful and past generations who work for justice, for prophets who called us to racial reconciliation, sometimes at the cost of their own lives, for those who have died because of police brutality or any kind of violence, because of the color of their skin. Help us remember the saints of the past that they might inspire us to proclaim your good news to all people by our words and actions and bring us at last into the glorious company of the saints in light. God of grace. Hear, hear our, our prayers, prayers for, those for those who have died. Please add your intercessions and thanksgivings from your home silently or aloud. We pray for continued recovery for Leon in Thanksgiving that Bernie is home.
pray for Mary Louise, whose birthday is this week. 94th birthday is this week. We pray for Leon for a quick recovery. We pray for uh, the Middleman family and for all families who are suffering due to job loss uh, because of this pandemic. We pray for Larita Jackson's faithful and tireless care for all those in need in our community. We pray for Monica Nebelet, who is in the hospital. We pray, pray for Gina, Pat's Trophy's daughter, still to determine her issue. Thank you. We, we pray for Inging and Tom, Ellen Lentz's sister, and brother-in-law who are moving from Colorado to take a new job in upstate New York for the safety and help as they make this long journey this coming week for their new job and making of new home in New York. For Jennifer DeLulu's friend, Yvette Frazier, who has been coming to St. John, Yvette's father passed away two days ago after having coma in ICU for several weeks. We pray for the Frazier family as they mourn the, the great loss. We pray for young people who are entering the job market at this time, who look to be independent and start their careers, but must have patience and perseverance. We pray for Stephen Ministry, uh, which is in the process of taking up but being paused by the pandemic. We give the special thanksgiving for Kiati, who turns 50 today. Uh, we're so glad that she was born. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now our concluding collect from our own Book of Common Prayer. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me now in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service 
and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Again, I would just like to say that this week is Kiati's 50th birthday, and these uh, beautiful flowers were uh, given by John in um, celebration of that and also in loving memory of Carol Wallace Bartlett. The um, uh, coffee hour follows uh, right on the heels of the service in the same Zoom room, so stay tuned for that. Um, I just have one announcement, really, which is that uh, this week, we will still have our Bible study discussions on Tuesday night at 7 and Wednesday at 11. It's the following week and the week after that we will not have the Wednesday morning discussion, though, um, and, and that's July 29th and August 5th, uh, that we will not be having the Wednesday morning discussion. Otherwise, uh, even though I'm on vacation, I'm on staycation, like most of you. <laughs> and so as long as I'm here, I'm happy to, um, and looking forward to continuing our Bible discussion on Tuesday nights at 7. That's just been a great discussion. Uh, we're just about to start the New Testament. So if you have any interest in jumping on board the Bible, best of the Bible discussion at this point, we would love to have you uh, for the journey. So let me know in text, email, call, whatever you want, and I will send you the syllabus for the New Testament, which starts in a couple of weeks. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>